Welcome to the best of the Leon Charney Report. For over two decades, Leon Charney, one of the architects of the historic Camp David Peace Accords, has interviewed some of the most important figures in modern day history. These interviews provide a window into some of the most significant events of the last 50 years. In this excerpt, filmed in March of 1995, Leon Charney interviews Palestinian Ambassador Hassan Abdel Rahman and Israeli Army General Micha Paz. They discuss Israeli-Palestinian relations, a topic as relevant today as it was 20 years ago. You, Israel's been under a torrent of, uh, I think, 140 or 135 people have been killed since the Oslo Agreements. You're a military man for 33 years. What, what is the future of the Oslo Agreements, in your opinion? Well, I'm, I'm an optimistic character. And I think the future is that there is hope. There is hope for peace. And uh, my personal opinion is that we were waiting for this time to have peace, to live together with our neighbors. Frankly talking, I am also a Palestinian. I was born in Tel Aviv, and my birth certificate and my birth certificate says Palestine. Really? It says Palestina, I, I meaning Eretz Israel, but it's Palestine. I, so I'm a, as the Palestinians as Mr. Hassan, who was born in Un Ramallah, understand? And as such, I think that we are neighbors, we are cousins. And my take is that we want to live in peace, and I do believe in it. And uh, I think that the Oslo Agreement opened a very important door to get into a peace agreement. And uh, the, f the fact is that we still have trouble, as you said. Many people were killed since. And if you are talking about this uh, cases where we have this young youngsters coming wrapped up with explosives and if you would ask me what do I feel about it that's tremendously terrible and I'm not sure that there is a re there is a way to stop these guys except to deal with those guys who are leading them and training them and unfortunately brain are doing a brainwash to them telling them that they are going to become heroes saints and poor guys, I think, this is my uh, opinion, are doing it because they feel like they are, they are going to become saints, going to heaven and so forth, and, uh, and, and unfortunately create these terrible uh, events that uh, I do hope that we will find a way. And when I say we, I mean both sides. I mean the PLO, I mean the Israelis will find a way to get to these people, to try and educate and tell them that this is not the way because we are jeopardizing by our own the same hope that we both are looking for. And uh, Hassan, is there an answer to this terrorism? Well, uh, let me uh, just say the following. Uh, I agree with the general that uh, Oslo uh, Accord opened... It was a watershed opened a wide gate for peace in the Middle East. It uh, changed the political landscape of our region. The Middle East is and never going to be the same after the Oslo Accords. Uh, now, what has been achieved on that front is uh, tremendous. You have a peace agreement between Israel and Jordan serious negotiations even between Syria, Lebanon, and the Israelis. The Palestinians and the Israelis have an agreement that whether, w even if they face difficulties, but this agreement constitutes the guideline for negotiations in the future. Uh, Arab countries are having relations with Israel. Uh, there is an interaction that is taking place on many levels between Palestinians and the Israelis. So we have this agreement that opened the gate wide open for people to uh, interact with, the other, with each other. Now, uh, on both sides, uh, we have uh, extremists. And those extremists have different agenda. Their agenda is not to accept this new reality that is emerging. On our side, we have the 
extremists who are trying to undermine the peace process. On the Israeli side, there are people who are trying to undermine the peace process by different means. Uh, those settlers, for example, who are trying to penetrate into the territory uh, which the Palestinians believe that at some time should become their homeland over which they will build their own state that will live side by side with Israel in peace and in harmony. So the challenge that we face, both of us, Israelis as well as Palestinians at this point, is not to let those extreme groups... Well, how do you do that? From our side, yeah. we have really to be very vigilant. We need to look at this situation not only from a security point of view. This is a security issue. It's political, it's economic. But it is political and economic. Right. And therefore, we have to address the economic difficulties, the economic issues that the Palestinians face at this but point. But many people say, Hassan, that uh, the chairman, Mr. Arafat, does not control the people. Is, is that true? No, I mean, he does not really need to control the people. Yes, Arafat needs to be able to lead his people. Is he able to? I think he is. I believe he is. I believe so far he is the only Palestinian leader who could have done what has been done. No other man alive among the Palestinians could have signed the peace agreement with Israel, well, except as I agree with you, but isn't there times in history where one guy goes this far and then somebody else carries the ball? Has there been enough dis distribution of power amongst the, uh, his people? I believe the only way to distribute power uh, among the Palestinians is to hold elections in the West Bank and Gaza and create a democratic government. That's how you decentralize. Right. Uh, you, you don't decentralize by uh, not having elections, well, and that's why we are insisting, uh, and hopefully we and the Israelis, who are our partners in this peace process, will reach an agreement on elections very soon. And uh, the indications that I have now uh, from the latest meetings that took place is that, yes, uh, those negotiations are going to be serious. Hopefully sometime in the summer we will have elections. And you think that that would help a lot? <coughs> oh, definitely. It will create the kind of leadership that we want, uh, and it gives legitimacy to the peace process, and it will isolate those groups who now uh, are trying to undermine the peace process because there is no elected government. Will the Hamas participate in those elections? Uh, I believe there are Hamas is too... Uh, 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 groups, uh, Hamas, there's the political Hamas and there's the, mili the military right. Hamas. Right. I myself, if you ask my, my views, I will tell you Hamas should participate and we should incorporate all the segments of the Palestinian society in the political process and allow them to express themselves through the legitimate political structure. Otherwise, you leave them, the only way to express their views is violence. Th through violence. So by incorporating them into the political uh, uh, process, you isolate those who support the violence. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high. To have this courageous man and my close friend killed, Backdoor channels, the price of peace. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. The preceding program was brought to you by Backdoor Channels, the price of peace.